let's have a look at what we call rationalizing the denominator. So we know that when we see a third like this, we can't simplify one on root two. That's as, that's as simplified as we could probably make it. But what we want to do a lot of times is try to get rid of an irrational denominator and have a rational denominator, get the, rid of the certain denominator. How do we get, how we, and if we think about what we've done before, how do we make a third become rational? Well, basically it's the idea of multiplying it by itself in that regard, or multiplying if it's a binomial by its conjugate. So root two, if we multiply it by root two, is gonna become a rational number. But we can't just change the value of one on root two. So what we've got to do is treat it like we've done before with uh, changing a denominator. When we change denominators, we change the way they look, but not the value of our fraction. And the same, and we do that by multiplying a fraction by the same on the top and bottom. We're going to do the same here. We're going to multiply the top and bottom of our third here by root two, because root two divided by root two would be one. So we can't. So that's not going to change the value of anything, because the multiplying by one gives us the same number. But it will change the way it looks, because root two times root two gives us two and the one times root two gives us a root two. Now we've got an irrational number in the numerator, but not in the denominator. So it's, and sometimes it's much easier to have a rational denominator than it is to have an uh, irrational denominator. So that's, that's the process we're gonna look at. Root three over two root five. Well, again, just what we need to do is multiply the, the third by root five, not two root five which sometimes we see people try and do that. But what do you, again, we wanted the most simplified third, not the not a complicated third as such, um, in, in least simplified form. So just multiplying it by root five will do the job because all we want to do is rationalize the denominator. So root five over root five, the two times root five times root five, five root five times root five gives us five, two fives are 10. And the root three times root five gives us root 15. And that's how we have to do it. Multiply by the same on top and bottom, so it will get rid of the third part of our denominator and rationalize it. So here's another example, five on root two. So multiply the top and bottom by root two. It gives us five root two over two. Now you might be looking going, well, it's probably not changing it that much. It really, it, is, it isn't because we've still got thirds in there. But there's no thirds in the denominator, and it, that's that's the key. We want to try and get rid of thirds in the denominator because it doesn't work for us sometimes. So three on eight root two again, multiply by root two on root two, and the eight root two root two times root two gives us two. Eight twos are sixteen, and three times the root two. Well, we can't simplify that any further. Root seven on root eight, we get root seven on the root eight there. So eight times eight root eight times root eight gives us eight there. The f seven eights are 56, and we can start to break that down because that could be root four times root uh, 14. And again, that's a perfect square, so it comes to two root 14, and the two and the eight cancels down to give us a one root 14 over four. So that's how we can simplify it when we've got really a simple term, like just a simple uh, uh, irrational number in the denominator. What about if our denominators a binomial product. Now, we, we, we did a video on conjugates and expand, multiplying by conjugates to rationalize the expression. This is where these conjugates are gonna come into play. So we know, we've seen, we've got four over seven minus root two, and if we look at the conjugate, which would be seven plus root two, multiply the top and bottom here by the conjugate. Now, when you do that, that's gonna give you seven times seven is, 49 and root 2 times the root 2. Remember, it's a, this is our difference of two square situation, which is going to give us minus 4. So that's where the 45 comes from 49 minus 4. And we're going to have four lots of the 7 plus root 2 there. And that'll just give us 4 7, it's a 28. And four lots of root 2 gives us 4 root 2. Can't simplify it any further because there's no common denominators. A common. Uh, factors in top and bottom so we have to leave it like that but that's what we need to do we start to have to multiply to rationalize our denominators multiply by the conjugates and that's on the top and bottom so the 10 plus 2 root 2 is the conjugate and then the conjugate would be 10 minus 10, 2 root 2 multiply top and bottom by that 10 root 10 times root 10 gives us 10 
2 root 2 times 2 root 2 gives us 8. And the 10 minus 8 will actually give us 2. And we've got the 2 root 3 times 10 gives us 10 root 30. 2 root 3 times 2 root 2 gives us the 4 root 6. So we can keep that. 2 root 30 minus 4 root 6. But if you look and go, well, I know 2 can go into 2. Goes in once and goes in once there. And 2 goes into 4 twice. So that's where we get the 2 root 6. So we can just leave it as root 30 minus 2 root 6. That would be its most simplest form. So getting this idea of multiplying to rationalize a denominator, a binomial denominator, multiplying by its conjugate, root 5 minus root 2, top and bottom. We get the square root of 5, square root of 2, 5 minus 4 gives us 1, and we just expand our bracket up the top, right like that. 2, two root 3 is the denom plus root 3 is the denominator, so multiply by 2 minus root 3 on top and bottom. Again, we rationalize our denominator. It's coming down to 1 nice, nicely in these situations. We get the two, 1 times 2 minus root 3. This comes down to 2 minus root 3. And again, we see root 7 plus root 3 multiplies by root 7 minus root 3. Gives us 7 minus 3 on the bottom. Seven, root 7 times root 7 gives us 7 up top. But then root 7 times root 3, root 21. All over 4, we leave it like that. So keep this in mind. We, to, to simplify it, it might not come down in, might come down to one, but a lot of times it might not come down to one. But it always will come down when we multiply by its conjugate to a rational number, and that's why we were multiplying by conjugates before and we investigate it, so we could do this process and be able to get our answers uh, and get our thirds written as an answer with a rational denominator.